Elon Musk, what are you doing here? So after going into the future and finding out that Elon Musk used the game to get a good insight into colonising Mars, I wanted to understand this game in its entirety and write a review about it after putting some time into the game. Released in March 2018, so almost four years ago now, this game at the time was seen as the next big building game. Perhaps it could establish its own big niche among other Paradox games, and maybe even overtake City Skylines. We've seen in recent times sci-fi games have been very successful. Just look at Stellaris and Kerbal Space Program. To be blunt though, this did not occur with Surviving Mars, and over time, except for when DLCs are released, Surviving Mars has remained stable with a couple of thousand active players at any given time. In this video, I therefore want to establish whether Surviving Mars is a failure or a success for Paradox. Because unlike Humankind, which came out just this year, it's far less obvious, and you could probably put a few arguments both ways. Just by looking at the reviews and feedback, it certainly has a dedicated audience, and that is crucial for a game, and it's one of the reasons why Victoria 3 was made, given the dedicated fanbase of Victoria 2, since they pushed for another game in the franchise. Maybe there will be a Surviving Mars 2, but only time will tell. Elon Musk probably knows. Nevertheless, let's dive into how to play this game, whether this game was a success or not, and finally whether it's worth getting, or if you're better off getting other games, given the recent controversy with it. Also, if you want us to fly to a completely alien city, since that's 100,000 subscribers, we are definitely going to fly to Germany. So, what is this game? Well, once you buy it, the time has come for you to claim the Red Planet for yourself, and build the first functioning colony on Mars. You need to set up the colony first, with these cute tiny robots, and try and immerse yourself in this space game. You can also exactly choose your location on Mars, and in a sense choose the type of dangers you wish to face. One thing I learned quickly is that this game is very easy for beginners to pick up, and therefore accessible. After playing multiple grand strategy games for hours, you get the feeling that games take hundreds of hours to become sufficient at. However, Surviving Mars is not quite like other Paradox games, and you can just do these five tutorials and you're pretty sufficient at the game. Maybe to master it it might take a bit longer, but you can definitely play at the lower difficulties of the game. Surviving Mars as well tries to give you a simulation as what it would be like to create a colony on Mars, so you need to get water, oxygen, and do everything you can to make it sustainable until you can eventually make it profitable for yourself. Once you have the basics of a Mars colony set up, you can then call upon some brave souls from Earth to come to Mars and experience a luxury holiday in a dome. I felt this does look a bit like a prison for some people. Once you've got your first colonists, you need to put them to work, and so they can research technology for you. They also have to fulfil their own needs though, don't really want any breakdowns in this sort of enclosed environment. A pond in the dome may help them cope with them being millions of miles away from their family. As time goes on, new challenges arise in the colony, and this means it keeps you on your toes, since there's always a need to fulfil, or something to build, and further benefit your colony. I think Mars has always captured the imagination of people, and whether there's some random aliens underground. This game does it justice, with lots of different aspects you can explore, and you can develop the colony the way you want it. You do this by building domes, mining minerals, and cultivating food. The graphics are also nice, and do give you a sense that you are on Mars. Another thing I do like about Surviving Mars as well, is you can also choose the type of difficulty you desire. So now we've discussed the game a bit, what was the initial reaction to Surviving Mars? Well it's clear that it had a great marketing campaign on YouTube, and the trailer of the game currently stands at 7.3 million views, which is absolutely insane, and is the most viewed video on the Paradox main channel. Therefore, clearly there was some hype around, and people were bound to purchase it, giving Paradox a reasonable number of sales. On the first day though, the reviews were let's say, mixed and around 25% of people who reviewed the game gave it a negative rating. Now of course, this isn't a disaster, since quite a lot of people liked it, but the negative reviews revealed what people thought. Lots of people were saying that this game had a lot of potential but lacked content. When you take this into account, nearly 4 years later, the game should have had some sort of uptick, because a lot of content has now been added to it. 
but this hasn't actually happened, and the player base is still somewhat stable at the lower end of popular games. The fact that Paradox used their DLC policy with this game, and wanted to add content over time, may have had a detrimental impact on the reception of Surviving Mars. This brings us onto the most recent DLC, Below and Beyond. A few months ago, on the 7th of September 2021, and the reception was absolutely awful. Usually, updates are meant to make the game better, but in this particular instance, it broke the game, and many people complained that the game was unplayable. I'm sure after spending thousands of hours on the game, you can imagine how annoying it must be not being able to play it. The fact people had to pay for it as well really added salt to the wound. Thankfully, the developers have now fixed it somewhat, and now it is playable. But regardless, the initial impression of the DLC may haunt the minds of these people. I now want to talk about whether it's worth getting, and whether it's worth buying, for £6.74 at a discounted rate that ends on the 5th of January. Usually it's £26.99. There's no doubt in my mind that despite its flaws, and the way it's developed over the years, it's not a bad game, and can give you a good experience with lots of interesting things happening, and there's a reason why it has such a dedicated fan base after all these years. If you love building games, then you could enjoy it, but at the end of the day, the fact of the matter is the competition is currently outdoing Surviving Mars by a significant margin. Even City Skylines, which is three years older than Surviving Mars, has a much bigger active player base. Other building games, like Factorio, also have a much larger fan base. This indicates that maybe there are simply better games out there, and Surviving Mars is not able to capture market share. Given the sheer number of eyes in this game, maybe you could argue it should have done better than what it's currently doing. Perhaps in comparison to other building games, it's simply not complex enough like City Skylines. This is obviously debatable though. The gaming market is so competitive nowadays, so perhaps it would have done better a few years before, but that's just pure speculation, and we'll never know for sure. It would be really interesting, however, to find out your guys' opinions on this game, and whether you believe it was a success or failure, and worth buying, or if you're better off spending money on a different building game. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time, goodbye for now. Let's go, Elon Musk.